Let's start with making the spicy pepper sauce. So I use all red peppers and yellow peppers. The yellow peppers really bring a wonderful sweet flavor to the sauce. I didn't use any green peppers and I wouldn't recommend that you use them for this sauce in my opinion. Some spring onions and some a white onion, one white onion and a scotch bonnet. They're really spicy so one's enough for me and some garlic and some ginger a lot of garlic i use obviously <laughs> then i went ahead and blended it all together if i had a food processor i would use it in place of a blender but mine's broken unfortunately <laughs> so the reason the food processor is better for this is that it allows you to blend all this together without the use of any water and it blends it to a really nice consistency i want like a rough consistency a food processor is perfect for that but a blender also works put a really tiny amount of water as tiny as possible and then pulse it to get a really nice rough consistency i don't want this smooth i want it rough but that's your choice the reason you don't want a lot of water in this is because we want to fry the sauce and the more water that's in it the longer it's going to take to completely fry because then it will obviously take longer for the water to evaporate out of the sauce. Okay so once you're happy with the consistency it's off to the frying pan. So I am pouring quite a big amount of oil here and um, I have a reason for this don't worry um, but I want a lot of oil to fry the sauce and once that's hot I have grated my ginger and garlic and chopped up my spring onions and I am pouring it all in there. As you can see, I do have a lot of ginger and garlic, but it adds beautiful flavor to this. But again, it's your choice how much garlic or ginger you want to add, depending on your preference. So I'm frying this off just for a couple of minutes. I don't want it to burn at all, just like, you know, a nice base frying. And then I went ahead and poured in my chunky blended peppers. So this nice chunky consistency is what I want. I definitely don't want it like a soup. I want it to have bits in it, like nice juicy bits. <laughs> And then it's time for my seasoning. So I have some dried thyme. You can put fresh thyme if you want or if you have that. And then I have a couple of nor cubes. Of course, you can personalize the seasoning to exactly how you want it, you know, what works for you. And I have a Maggie cube as well. And some salt. I add crayfish stock powder to almost everything, but it definitely works in this sauce. All right, now with all my seasoning added and tasted, I just left it to simmer on medium heat for about 20 minutes, but you'll know it's done when it looks like this. The oil has floated to the top. It's shiny, it's thick, it's luscious, and it's delicious. And there's a lot of oil on top there however I do have plans for that oil I do take it out and I'm going to use it later on in the video so keep watching but look how easy that was and this is such a versatile sauce you can have it with anything rice chicken fish chips anything <laughs> all right so the sauce is done it's time for the fish so I have a couple of tilapia fish here. They have been cleaned inside and washed thoroughly. And I also like to cut off the fins because they're really sharp and they can be really hazardous and I just don't want that stress. <laughs> so I just cut those off with a pair of scissors just on the sides, the tail and then the middle fins. But of course, it's your choice if you want to do this, but I always do this because my mom always did it and I think it's good to do.
Next I went ahead and dried my fish with some paper towels just because I don't want excess water leaking when I'm grilling my fish. It might dilute the flavor and I just don't want, you know, soggy fish. So I think this step is really important. So the fish now nice and dry, I went ahead and used a knife to score the fish, just cutting it not too deep so that when I put the seasoning on, the seasoning can penetrate nice and deeply into the fish and the fish can have a really lovely flavour once it's cooked. I don't want surface flavour, I want infused flavour. Now I'm going to create my seasoning mix. So in a bowl, again, I have my crayfish stock powder, which is a no-brainer here. Obviously, you know, we're cooking some fish. Of course, you can make this however you want it. Um, the different spices, different seasonings that work for you. But I added some garlic granules, some ginger powder, some paprika just for a nice smokiness and then I have some mixed herbs that include thyme, oregano, rosemary and then I sprinkled in a little more thyme and then some black pepper as well. Of course you can use like proper chili pepper but I didn't want this really spicy in my household. We're not really spicy people. <laughs> now here is the secret ingredient to take this fish to the next level some pepper soup spice let me tell you this makes such a huge difference and i would really recommend that you try this out it's really really nice then a sprinkle of salt and a handful of chopped onions i mean that's your choice some people really don't like chunks of onions in their food here is some oil from my sauce from earlier this is huge <laughs> it makes a huge difference it's just wonderful if you could get some oil from the sauce that i made earlier it adds a really lovely depth of flavor to the fish honestly try it and tell me i'm lying okay <laughs> you'll be making this grilled fish every week so anyway the seasoning mix done i'm ready to massage the fish with the seasoning so you want to really take care with massaging the sauce in into the uh, gaps that you have cut into the fish, into the actual fish, stuff some onions in there, you know, let it all marry together so that the fish can take in as much of the flavor as possible. But you want to save a little bit of the oil and the sauce um, because we are going to brush it onto the fish later on as you'll see All right, so once I was done with this I just set the fish aside cover it with some cling film into the fridge just to sit for a few minutes to marinate um, while I do some other preparation Moving on to the yam, so I have my lovely piece of yam here and obviously you can cut it into any shape that you want I am wanting some lovely chip like shapes so that is what I'm going ahead to do. You can also use potatoes, I mean chips would also be nice with this dish, really nice actually. So I have a bowl of water there and um, I want to chop my yams into the water and that will just prevent the yam getting discolored, keep them nice and fresh for when I'm ready to fry them. Having some plantain as well, so I just cut these also into my preferred shape. So 
So all my prep done, I went ahead to fry my yam. So um, yeah, this was traumatic because as you can see, the oil is spitting everywhere, including my face and my skin. <laughs> if you don't want to go through this trauma, a tip is to make sure to dry your yam. You can dry your yam just with some paper towel, but I didn't want to go through that effort, so I opted for risking getting my face burnt off instead, yeah. <laughs> but I did survive, thank you. After a couple of minutes of frying, I do put a splash of water into the yam. This is to help the yam cook better. The water just allows the yam to soften and it's soft and fluffy inside and it's nice and crunchy on the outside. But beware, don't add too much water because then you'll end up with soggy oily yam and that is not good so just be careful of the amount of water that you add now as my yam is cooking it's time for my fish to go in the oven i already did preheat the oven to 200 degrees for about 10 minutes and i'm just gonna pop my fish in to cook in my experience it takes between 7 to 10 minutes for the yam to be cooked but you'll know it's done once it's lightly golden and it's nice and crispy on the outside but just to be on the safe side I'm gonna check it so I'm just gonna take one piece out and have a look all right so my check was satisfactory so i'm gonna take my yams out and put them on a sieve laced with some tissue paper just to you know dry out some of the oil but they are nice and dry and crispy definitely not oily and i'm just sprinkling a little bit of salt and i'm going to just shake that about just to you know season the yams a little bit now the yams are fried it's time to go ahead and fry my plantains in just the same hot oil so by this time my fish have been in the oven for about 10 minutes so I just take them out so I can brush some of that seasoned oil onto them. This just allows the fish to take on more of that flavor. And of course, the oil helps the fish skin to crisp up a little more in the oven. This is just looking fabulous. And of course, turn them over carefully because fish is fragile and one did nearly break on me unfortunately but it didn't break so once both sides have been brushed with seasoning i just pop them back in the oven for five to ten minutes more on the five minute side to be honest and about this time my plantain is done look at how golden and delicious those are mm, i want to grab them from the screen <laughs> Right, so if your eyes don't tell you that this was delicious, believe me when I tell you this was just perfect. The fish was soft and flavorful. The sauce was just the right amount of spicy and slightly sweet. The yam crispy and fluffy and of course plantain never goes wrong this was just a perfect meal and it's a perfect treat for maybe like a saturday night or a sunday treat i mean this you gotta try this and let me know thank you so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel thank you so much bye